you've made it to the last chapter of the semester. Congratulations, good for you. I know this is hard. I know that it's a lot of information. I know that it's difficult and you have persevered and I'm certain that it's paid off. So stick with me for one last chapter as we cover the statement of cash flows, arguably the most important financial statement that there is. So we're going to first start off talking about the different sections of the statement of cash flows and then we'll move into actually doing the statement of cash flows in objective two. So the statement of cash flows is that fourth financial statement. What it does is it reports the cash receipts, how, what cash did we get, how much did we get, where did it come from, and how much are cash payments, how much cash did we spend, what did we spend it on for a specific period of time. Specifically, it's going to be the same period of time as the income statement and the statement of retained earnings. So if those are for a year, our statement of cash flows is going to be for the same year. So we're looking at what caused cash to go up, what caused cash to go down. More specifically, the statement of cash flows explains the difference in what accrual accounting net income is showing as on the income statement and what net income would be under a cash basis accounting. So we know that under accrual accounting, we record revenue when we earn it, not when cash is received. We record expenses when they are incurred, not when cash is paid. That's different than if we were using cash basis accounting. So the statement of cash flows reconciles those two. Essentially, it tells us why is it that profit doesn't equal the change in cash amount. It's very important for us to know what our cash flows are. We need to know cash flows to predict future cash flows, to help evaluate our decisions, and to, we need cash to pay debts and dividends. So we've got to know what cash is. We may have made a lot of profit, but if we don't have a lot of cash flow, we can't pay dividends. We're not going to be able to pay our debts. So cash flows on the statement of cash flows are divided into three sections, operating, investing, and financing. We're going to walk through each of these three sections. You'll notice when you get to the videos for objective two, I've broke them. Objective two was really long, so I broke it into two separate videos. So there's a video just for the operating section and then a video for the investing and financing section. Watch the operating section first. That's the first section you have to do. Then the investing and financing comes second. So the operating section is the first section listed. This reports the cash receipts from anything related to the income statement, okay? So it's revenues, expenses, interest, whether that's interest revenue or interest expense, it's dividend revenue. Now let me be very clear, dividend revenue is not dividends that we are paying. This is when we own stock in another company and they pay us dividends. That would show up on in our income statement under the other revenues and gains section, as well as current assets and current liabilities. I'll explain that more in a minute. So anything that appears on the income statement is going to show up in the operating activities section. Again, this is typically considered the most important section because this has to do with our day-to-day -day operations. How much money did we make from just doing our normal day-to-day -day thing, selling our product, paying our bills, that sort of thing. Investing activities has to do with anything in the long-term asset section of the balance sheet. So anything related to property, plant, and equipment, I bought equipment, I sold equipment, anything to do with a long-term note receivable, I loaned money, uh, the uh, person paid me back, so I received the money, or any investments that I have. Okay, so long-term investments, I bought a piece of land, I bought common stock in another company, I sold stock that I was holding as an investment, any of those relate to investing activities. The one exception is dividend revenue f relating from an investment that shows up in the operating section because it's on the income statement. 
And then the last section is the financing section. Financing has to do with long-term liabilities and equity. So anything related to debt, either you borrowed money or you paid the debt off, if you issued stock, if you pay dividends, if you buy and sell treasury stock, um, either the buying or the selling, anything that has to do with long-term liabilities and equity shows up in the financing section. I like this uh, diagram because it breaks it up for us. So investing is all long-term assets, financing is all long-term liabilities and equity, and operating takes care of all the current assets and current liabilities. And again, I'll explain that in a little bit. So just hang on there. There's also a section, or it can be a fourth section. Most of the time, it's just a footnote at the bottom of the section that are what we call non-cash investing and financing. So if you, for example, bought a building, but you took out a loan for it, you didn't actually pay cash. So when you were looking at the balance sheet, you would see, oh, look, we bought a building, and I would expect to see that in the investing section, but it's not going to be there because I didn't pay cash. And then I see my note my mortgage payable go up and I would expect to see hey I got some cash in but I didn't so at the bottom I would just explain oh by the way I paid I took out that mortgage to pay for the building now, there's two ways to calculate the operating activity section, or two methods of formatting it, I should say. There's the indirect and the direct method. GAP and IFRS allow you to use either method. I am only going to teach you to use the indirect method because that is the, co the method most commonly used. It's also the easiest method. If you just really want to learn the direct method, then you can read about it in the appendix to chapter 14. But we're only going to learn the indirect method. The indirect method starts with that accrual accounting net income number and then adjusts it, converts it to what would be a close approximation of cash net income number.